I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an awesome day the Lord has given to us to worship him in truth and in spirit this morning. If you are visiting us for the first time, we welcome you. Uh, Sister Chinu's friends, thank you for coming. Our Exa's brothers and parents are here. We have been praying for you and uh, thank you for coming. God brought them safe here. And may the Lord bless you and establish you in this uh, city. As, uh, thank you, Pastor Jeffrey. Uh, as Pastor Jeffrey mentioned, our uh, Spanish uh, team, uh, Brother Jose and the entire team, uh, started the evangelism uh, yesterday. I saw the picture and we sent them to different places. And uh, God is going to honor your ministry and your faithfulness. And uh, Pretty soon, we will have a Spanish congregation. How many of you believe that? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, we are serving a powerful God, a good God, an awesome God. And God is going to do great and mighty things when we come together and worship him in truth and in spirit. You will see a drastic change in everything that we see, that we do, because God is a sovereign God. And he is on the throne for his children. Hallelujah. As you hear, many of our seats are empty. It's July 4th weekend. Many of our families are already out of town. Some of them are traveling. Please keep all of them in our prayers, our pastors. You know, our pastors are a gift from the Lord. And last week, the Holy Spirit. You know, we want to covering, covering your prayer. Because God is going to take us to the next level. And going to do great and mighty things. Prayer is very important. And our pastors need to be strong and powerful. And they need to be divinely and supernaturally protected by God. So last week at midnight, the Lord asked me to appoint uh, seven individuals as pastors intercessors from the church. I immediately got up and uh, the Lord gave me the name. And I spoke to all the seven of them. They were happy to intercede. For our pastors, most probably next week, we will tell you the names and uh, we will pray for them. I know everybody is praying for our pastors. Don't misunderstand me. You are all, our church is a praying church. And the Holy Spirit wanted to do something different. And we need intercessors to intercede for the pastors and family. They are the one who get a lot of attack. And they are in the front of the line. And I thank the Lord for those seven individuals took the burden and they said, yes, pastor, we are there and we will pray for all our pastors. That's what their responsibility and they will do some extra prayer than everybody else and they will do that for the glory of God. This morning, let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us from the word of God and uh, this uh, year is an year of comfort. I don't know why the Holy Spirit gave that promise at the beginning of the year because we all need comfort from the Lord. Because we go through difficulties, tough times, challenges in life. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. For you are with me. Hallelujah. That is a promise of God for a child of God. That his presence is going to be with you every moment and every, into every days of your life. And your road and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Agape Church, God is going to comfort each and every one of you in a unique fashion, in a unique way. And God's presence is going to take us to the next level. God is going to touch your life in a very special way. How many of you want to be a winner? We don't like to fail in life, right? We want to be winners. And we want to be victorious. So it, we, winning won't come that easy. Can you win something easy? No. So we have... A fight to win. That's what the title of the sermon. We have a fight to win. Especially for a Christian. For a believer of Jesus Christ. We have to fight. Don't give up just like that. We have to fight for our victory. We have to fight 
for our win. That is what the Lord wanted to speak. You know, the, the fight has got different meaning. Battle, struggle, wrestling, everything is the same meaning for the fight. You know, Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Hallelujah! We do have a fight. We need to wrestle against certain things to be victorious. And God is going to strengthen you to fight against the darkness, rulers of the age, against the powers, principalities. Everything that come against your life, contrary to the word of God, contrary to the promise of God, God is going to strengthen you to fight and find your victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! This is a house of prayer. This is a house of miracle. This is a house of victory. And we are going to declare the victory. Hallelujah. Before, before even we start the war. Hallelujah. That is our God. God will, you know, release the result before even the final. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon. Everybody say, no weapon. Formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. There is weapon that can form against a child of God. There is obstacles. There is hindrances. There is difficulty that can form against as a weapon against a child of God. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon can prosper against your life. Child of God, do you believe that this morning? Of course, there is fight. There is wrestle. There is battle. But the Lord is going to give me victory in my situation. Hallelujah. I will not sit quiet without seeing the victory and a result that is a winning result. Psalm 27, 13 and 14 says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is the hope of a child of God. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. Child of God, waiting is very hard. Difficult. That's not all the fast food. We just wanted to press a button and get everything into our bedroom, right? Waiting is hard. So the Bible says, you know, don't lose your heart. Believe in God. Believe in the promises of God. And we must believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I will wait for the Lord. And be of a good courage. We have courage this morning to wait on the Lord. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There is a God who can strengthen you. That's what that singer say, let the weak say, I'm strong. There is a God who can take your weakness and put his power into your weakness and strengthen your life. This morning when you get out of here, don't go with a sad face. Don't go with a weak face. This is the place in which we, energy, we get energy. Recharge our energy. Recharge our weak batteries. And this is a place in which we fill our life with the God's divine power and anointing and energy. Hallelujah. Your face should glow after you worship the living God. 
and your face should change your sadness must go your weeping must go your sorrow must go because you are serving a powerful god an awesome god he can rejuvenate your strength i will say those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they will rise like an eagle they cannot sit quiet they will see beautiful things they will go very high tell the god god's plan for your life is so unique so different and this morning i want you to see that you need to hope for the best you need to see that i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living hallelujah we have a fight to win these are the three points i just wanted to give you the lord will fight for you that's the first point you are not going to fight the lord is going to fight for you how many of you believe that i do have a battle god already declared that you are going to be a winner and the easiest part is you don't need to fight that is beautiful the lord said child of god you have a fight in this world and you are going to be victorious and i will fight for you your burdens are gone you don't need to struggle to fight every day the lord said i will fight for you psalm 24 verse 8 says who is the king of glory hallelujah by the way king of glory is present here do you know about that king of glory when you came into the sanctuary you came under the anointing you came under the place that the glory of the lord manifest and how many of you recognize that you carry the cabo the glory of god you are a child of god wherever you go you carry the weight of god the glory of god the power of god the anointing of god when you came here the king is already here hallelujah who is the king of glory who is the king of king the lord strong and mighty everybody say the lord strong and mighty and the lord is the mighty in battle bible says my god is mighty in battle you may be weak your weapons are weak and your strength may be weak the bible says my god is mighty in battle when you come into the sanctuary you welcome the king of king the glory the king of glory and you say that lord you are strong and mighty i am coming with my weakness i am coming with my sickness i am coming with my sorrow i am coming with my with my sadness i am coming into the king of glory and you are strong and powerful I am a weak vessel. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your anointing. I need your protection. I need your healing. If you come with that prayer, that attitude, you will not go as the same person as you came in. Hora mana shakura basi. you will go as a different person as a changed person because you are consumed under the protection of the king of glory strong and mighty powerful in war hallelujah exodus 15 3 and 4 says the lord is a man of war the lord is a man of war The Lord is his name Pharaoh's chariot and his army he has cast into the sea look at the way the Lord performs miracle the Lord performs signs and wonders his chosen captains also were drowned in the red sea it is not ordinary captain they he chosen some powerful mighty men to bring back the children of god under captivity sometimes you know the world will take you to the captivity the world wants you to under their feet at this morning we are declaring 
that God called you to fight the battle and win the victory. Hallelujah. Isaiah 42, 13 again says, The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. Children of God, when you are in a battlefield, you, the Lord said, you don't go. I will go for you. I will fight for you. And the Bible says, the Lord shall go forth like a mighty man and let your weakness be with you. And the Lord will go as a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. Hallelujah. On your behalf, on my behalf, the Lord will go in front. He will stir up his seal for his love for his children. And he will come up as a mighty man of war. This says the, uh, 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 and, and he will, he shall cry out. Yes, shout loud. And he shall prevail against his enemies. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this morning? Lord can defeat all my enemies. All the weapons that formed against my life. My Lord is able to defeat that. Second Chronicles 20.15 says, And he said, Listen, all you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you king of Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Are you fighting a battle this morning? Do you think you are in the battlefield? Do you think you are alone and isolated by everybody? Do you fearful about your defeat? The Lord said, no, 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 no. And I will fight for you. Battle belongs to the Lord. Do you have a fight this morning? God is going to stand for you. You know, everyone's battle is different. All of us fight a different kinds of battle in our life. We have to fight the battle to win. Don't give up. Sometimes you have to do it alone. There may not be anybody to help you. Your struggle may be for a temporary thing, but hang in there. The Lord will stand for you and fight the battle for you. Hallelujah. Hang in there. If you are struggling with anything this morning, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Don't give up. You are a child of God. You are a chosen one. The second point I want to bring it to you, you are in his hand. The first thing is the Lord will fight for you and you are in his hand. That is very important. In whose hand you are in is very important. That's worth the value. You are in his hand. Everybody look at your hand and say, Lord, I am in your hand. I am in your hand. John chapter 10, 27 through 29, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Jesus said, nobody can snatch them out of my hand. The devil will come and adopt his trick and try to snatch you from the hand of the Lord. Jesus said, no one can snatch my sheep from my hand. Are you fearful this morning? Whose hand you are in? Who is holding your hand? Are you afraid of your life? Who is holding your hand? Jesus said, I know my sheep. I call them by name. Child of God, who knows your name? Even though you may have some difficult names. Some people cannot uh, pronounce my first name. They call me different name. Shaggy, Saggy. It doesn't matter to the Lord. The Lord knows it is clearly my name. Most of the time I go by my last name, Mr. Daniel. 
that is safe. <laughs> or Pastor Daniel, that is safe. Lord said, this is it. Nobody can snatch me. Just imagine how strong our God is. All these powers of darkness can come against you. All the weapons formed against can come against you. And the Lord said, you are in my hand. And you are in my hand. I will hold my, your, righteous, your hand with my righteous right hand. My father has given them to me. It's greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. You are in, in Jesus' hand and his father's hand. No one. Everybody say no one. No one. The devil. The sickness. No isolation. No mental imbalance. And nothing, nothing can snatch you from the hand of our almighty God. That means you are safe in his hand. They say, I'm safe in his hand. I'm safe in his hand. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, 16 says, see, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. The Lord said, child of God, I am engraved to you. I tattooed you. Engraving means you cannot erase it. Sometimes tattoos can be erased, but engraving is a seal. It is, it is engraved through your blood. Jesus said, I gave my blood and engraved you. The palm of my hands. Why are you struggling? Why are you worrying? This word is a powerful word. The Lord said, you know, I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. Nobody can erase you. Nobody can take you from the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, 4 says, or 91.1, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Again, verse 4 says, he shall cover you with his feathers. Wow. Feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. There is a covering. There is a supernatural protection of God because you are under his hand. Because you are under his hand, he has engraved you in his palm. The victory is yours. Of course, you do have a battle. You have to fight the battle to win. But the Lord said, I will fight for you. And you are in my hand. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Not in some of your ways. In all your ways. In your sad time. In your lonely time. In your sickness. In your ups and downs. In your difficulty. All the days of your life. He said, I shall give you charge over to my angels to protect you and supernaturally favor you. The last point. He provides the right weapons. Our fights are different. We all fight different kinds of battle. But the Lord will give you the right weapon in your hand to fight the bad battle. He will give you the right weapon to fight the battle. God will provide the right weapons in your hand to fight the battle and to win the battle. If you look at the road in Moses' hand, it is just an ordinary road, a stick in Moses' hand. But since it is touched by God, it is good enough to bring water from the rock. It is good enough 
to part the Red Sea. Hallelujah! God has given a road in Moses' head, a tour. But it was touched by God and anointed by God. The power of God will consume your life and come through your life to withstand the enemy. And God will give you the right weapon to fight against the enemy. When you look at Exodus chapter 13, 14 verse 13 to 16, and Moses said to his people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. Uh, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. God knows he has got a stick in his hand, a tool. That is more than enough for the Lord to fight the battle. Not Moses is fighting the battle. The Lord is fighting the battle. Then he said, but lift up your rod, Moses. You have a stick in your hand. Lift it up. That's what you need to do. You don't need to do any hard thing. And stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You know, just like you just lift the stick and just do this. That's all you need to do. Divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea. The Red Sea is still there. But the Lord parted the Red Sea for his children to walk over through the dry land. Hallelujah! This morning, God is going to divide something for his children. He is going to pot something for his children. That you need to go in a smooth place, through a smooth place. Enemy is behind you. Their plan is to take you back to bondage. Their plan is to destroy your plan that the Lord has for you. But child of God, the tool the Lord has blessed Moses with was just a road. Hallelujah. When you see five smooth stones and the sling in the hand of David, you may think it is just like a protection tool for a shepherd boy. Five stones and a sling that is usually a shepherd boy carries. But that was the tool. One stone out of the five. That was the tool the Lord has given to David to eliminate and kill and destroy the giant Goliath. The Lord is going to give you the right tool in your hand to destroy the enemy that is coming against your life. He has already given you the tool to withstand the wrestle and the battle and win the victory. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 39, David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slang it and struck the Philistines in his forehead so that the stone snuck into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. The right weapon is already given. I'm going to close this message here. We're going to worship the Lord with this song. I want you to go from here believing that you receive the victory. You are victorious and you are in a battlefield and the Lord already declared the victory for you. Psalm 144 once says, Blessed is the Lord, my rock, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle. You know, the Lord doesn't need your finger for the battle. The finger that you praise with, the hands that you clap with. And this morning, the Lord is going to give you right weapon for fighting your battle. It can be a weapon of faith. 
it can be a weapon of prayer it can be a weapon of confidence it can be a weapon of comfort whatever the weapon you need to fight the battle the lord is going to give it to you you know when you are worshiping the lord i want you to consume in the presence of god in a very special way god is here to bless us i said we have a battle to win we have a battle to fight and to win victory is ours the lord will fight for you and you are in his hand and he will give you the right tool for your victory hallelujah